I can understand why you'd be mad at the title of the video. However, if you just let me explain, it'll all make sense by the end. I promise. Thank you. I'm not a person who likes to lean into my race when I make content. You can see that I'm a black content creator in the Fortnite space. That's obvious. I don't think I need to hit you over the head with that fact, nor do I think I deserve any special praise for it. If you're watching my content, I want you to be attracted to me for the same reason you'd be attracted to any other Fortnite content creator, because I'm entertaining and I provide some value to you. However, in light of Fortnite's recent issues with the Discovery tab, I'd be quite ignorant to ignore the elephant in the room. And now we have to have one of those uncomfortable conversations. This is like one of those moments where you're the only black kid in class and the teacher brings up the issue of slavery and then everybody in the class just looks back at you to see what your reaction is gonna be. Since I'm one of a handful of black people that actually make Fortnite content in this space, and as far as I know, I'm the only one that does commentary, I guess I'll stand at the front of the class and give my report on this situation. First off, I'm not offended by monkey box fights, but that doesn't mean that I like it. I just see it for what it is. It uses rage bait marketing tactics for you to play a recycled Fortnite concept, one that we've seen a million times. And look, I will admit their marketing strategy was quite outrageous. The map in and of itself doesn't seem inherently racist, right? But when you look at the marketing strategy that was put behind it, it does seem to have some racially insensitive overtones. But even with all of that knowledge, me as a black person is not gonna get upset at this cringe map. But why is that? Why am I not outraged? How is being mad going to solve the problem with Fortnite's discovery tab? How does being mad make this map's marketing practices any less racist? Getting upset about it isn't really gonna fix anything. I do have a solution to the problem, but I'll tell you more about that towards the end of the video. The other part of this equation too is I'm not against offensive humor or racially insensitive jokes. I grew up as a big fan of Dave Chappelle. I can quote more Uncle Ruckus lines from the boondocks than most average human beings. Heck, I've even made my own Uncle Ruckus skit on the internet that you could probably still find. Good evening, everyone. This is your Uncle Ruckus. No relation. Have you heard about this Alabama riverfront brawl? Should be named the Alabama Zoo fiasco after the baboonery display. This all started because this beautiful white family was trying to enjoy their American right to rock and roll and beer by the ocean on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I do think that there is a place for edgy humor, and I do think that the internet has become a bit too sensitive when it comes to these types of jokes. However, that's not what Monkey Box PvP is doing. They're just being edgy for for the sake of being edgy, and that's never funny. It's the equivalent of grade school children pointing and saying, ha ha, black person looks like monkey. That's just, it's not funny. If I'm being completely transparent with you guys, my issue with this map isn't that it's racially insensitive or that it looks racist. It's actually my issue with creative Fortnite in general. And we've talked about this on the channel before a long time ago. It's insane to me how consistent these bad maps get pushed out every time Epic goes on break. This happened last winter with the Ukraine versus Russia map. When the Fortnite community isn't getting consistent updates that's when all this outrage starts to happen you'll get people that are pushing the boundaries of creative maps or people are upset that fortnite skins from five years ago that were told to us are never returning people are mad that they're not coming back even though we know they're not coming back it's the same thing every year the community either finds something to be outraged about or they create something that's incredibly outrageous it's literally a meta within fortnite content creation I think the other problem we face when it comes to this whole issue is that this meta is encouraged by Tim Sweeney or Epic Games philosophy when it comes to UEFN. Tim Sweeney has come on a record and said, well, if kids are playing the maps, then clearly they deserve to be there. I'm paraphrasing somewhat, but that's the gist of what he's saying. In essence, if there are enough people that are willing to play these kinds of maps, why shouldn't they be at the front of Discovery? The issue is this seems to be the vast majority of maps that get pushed out. It's always a duplicate of box fights or zone wars. And that in and of itself isn't necessarily a problem if there's a new unique spin on it, but do you know how many interesting concepts there are that exist out there? People whose maps Maps never get pushed out. Things that are insanely interesting, concepts that people haven't come up with yet that just don't get pushed. But why is this? Is this Epic Games' fault? The issue is now that Creative Fortnite is so saturated with so many maps, the only way for you to get real exposure, to get real traction from a map, is to have a really good marketing strategy. As much as we might not like Monkey Box Fight PvP, it does have a really insane and well thought out marketing strategy. Using outrage to get the Fortnite community to play your map. If you can generate enough of an audience through content, you can push your map out there to the front of discovery. That's why being a content creator is so beneficial and why a lot of map creators will reach out to content creators to promote their maps. Ultimately, this is just an abuse of the system that's currently in place. And I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with this system. The problem is 
Fortnite doesn't seem to care. And more importantly, they're not taking into consideration the kind of culture that this is creating for their game. Creative Fortnite as it is right now is not being known for innovation, for coming up with new gaming ideas, for furthering gaming culture. Creative is known for staying in the same spot that it's been for the last four years and pushing out cringe maps like Skibbity Toilet and now Monkey Box Fight PvP. I'm all for companies making money and for maps that perform really well and get consistent plays to continue to stay at the front of Discovery. However, they're using racially insensitive marketing practices to promote their maps. That's where we have to start looking at this and be like, should we really allow this to continue? Because I'll be honest, if Monkey Box Fight PvP was just what it was, just the map, and there was none of that weird marketing behind it, the map in itself has no racial overtones whatsoever. There's nothing racially insensitive about the map itself, but it's how the map got popular, which is the problem. And on top of that, if I'm being totally honest, this isn't even the craziest map that I've seen. Have you seen Jamaica or Brazil Zone Wars? Those maps are wild when it comes to their thumbnails. I think about it from the standpoint of these map creators that build these insane projects that have a really hard time getting their maps out. I've been subject to that myself. My team and I put a lot of effort into a lot of maps that we made and they got little traction whatsoever. I have no idea how a thumbnail like Brazil Zone Wars is permissible, but one created by Epic Games devs themselves like Dumb Blonde had for her map got denied. So what's the solution to this problem and what should Epic Games do about fixing all of this? If I'm being honest, I don't think it's up to Epic to fix this. I think it's up to us. First and most importantly, I think the main thing we can do is just not play these maps. For the sake of this video, I did play Monkey Box Fights earlier, but I played for two rounds and got off immediately because I just don't want to support the map. It's a copy and paste of every superhero box fight map that exists. Not to mention, I'm not for the marketing practices that were used to make the map as popular as it is. Once again, guys, I don't think it's anything to get outraged by, but at the same time, I don't think we should be giving this as much attention as it's being given. And one could argue that I'm giving it attention now by making this video. However, someone needs to spearhead the conversation to direct people to not pay attention to this stuff. We as a community need to talk about this problem because it keeps happening. Finally, the most important thing I think we can do is create our own discovery tab. Later on this week on Twitter, my friends at UEFN Hub are going to make a tweet asking for map builders to post their best creations. We want to see your island codes and your map trailers for each island. To top it off, we want to play on these maps ourselves live on stream. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't know when the post is going to go up, and I don't know when we're going to have our next episode of Unreal Island Showdown to playing your guys' maps. However, make sure you're following UEFN Hub on Twitter, as well as my Twitter page, to get updates on when we're going to have the next live stream, and for when our Discovery tab is going to go live. Rather than being outraged by this, let's use this as a good opportunity to showcase maps from people that deserve recognition, to highlight the people in this community that are actually trying to do good. If we make that our focus and give these maps traction, then maybe these other maps will fall by the wayside.